What up, dudes? I'm here in FLP in Denver, Colorado. I'm taking you on a little adventure. We're gonna check out what he has in development, which is E. Grom and E. Ruckus. Evan here. Oh. <laughs> what's going on, fellas? Uh, we're gonna just give you a quick walk around of what's going on in here uh, with these two projects. This one being the biggest one, just because we're practically rebuilding the whole rear end of this ruckus to make it electric. Um, and you've already you've already proved the concept with the Grom, right? Yeah. So the Grom, we finished it up. It was really kind of a quick, a lot quicker deal, just because it has a swing arm on it and it's already chain driven. And uh, you know, we got pretty good, pretty good um, idea of what the ruckus is going to be like. And we're looking at 75 miles an hour. And with the battery that we had on there, it was about uh, 30 miles of range. And now we're actually going to a bigger battery, so it should be about 50 miles of range. And the acceleration is just the same. What's the, what were you telling me about the uh, the gear, like this this gear reduction okay. thing? So what was that all about? Because you had that before, right? This is this is the motor we were using initially, which is direct drive. And then we're changing it out to this uh, gear reduced. So it's like one to two point something gear ratio and what that's going to allow us is to still run a smaller sprocket in the back to not run these ginormous sprockets and the pizza cut the pizza sprocket yeah yeah and you're going to have a crazy acceleration is what's going to happen. Um, so they're, they're advancing so much of these electric motors it's crazy and the cool thing too is you can actually change these sprockets in here mm. so this one, like one down this one's up. fixed yeah so you can actually go and adjust it to whatever you like so you just had it because that one's got the little the extra gear, gear you had to move o move the motor over yeah I you're to going to have to it's honestly uh i'm still up in the air with it i might go back to something like this that i can change the sprockets just because it's not as centered like that one was you have to shift it over about two inches how many miles have you put on the the grom <laughs> not many uh, Enough to prove the concept. I think for the concept, I think we did about 25 miles round trip, and it was awesome. You sit at a red light, you don't smell like exhaust. Yeah, that's the best part. And what is this? This is a 4K motor. So it's a 4K motor, and then this is the Voltol EM200. Yeah, give that's the breakdown of like if you're totally new to this, like what is needed to make this work, and like a lot of money. Dumb it down. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, so this is going to be your controller, and this right here is a new generation of this. So you can see same power, smaller package. So this is going to be your controller. You're going to have your motor, whatever you decided going with, uh, wiring harness, and then this wiring harness actually allows you to use this DC to DC converter. So that'll use your 72 volt, and it'll bring it down to 12 volt, so you don't have to have a separate battery. That's cool. And then so all your blinkers, headlights, taillights, oh yeah, everything all that work. stuff works with the same battery. And uh, batteries in the office. So this is what's powering the beast right here. It's a big sucker too. This is better than Iron Man's chest piece. <laughs> um, so this was like our first prototype battery. We had it made by Brick Lithium. Um, he's out doing other things now, but we found a different maker, and it's actually the packs about the new packs about five inches longer. And we have another row of cells on the top, so that's going to get you about 50 miles of range. But if you can see, this one's uh, 72 volt, 33.6 amp hours, 360 amp max withdrawal, and we're using the the Molly cells on. So don't get shocked. Don't lick this. Yeah. Speedometer up there, which we are talking to a few guys to get a better version of that with an LED screen. One of them even has navigation built into it. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, so that's on the way. What about like, uh, say, you, is is there upgrade? So like, say for instance, you have like this controller. You have two different controllers here. They do the same thing. Yeah, so like, those are, they do the same. So those are doing the same thing except that one's smaller, but you can always upgrade those. A lot of guys have actually reached out and they're like, hey, um, I want to use this controller X, Y, and Z. We're using this one because I know it works. It's a proven concept for me, and I don't want to change something that I already know. But 
you know, there are there are some that are super small and, and they say that they pack the same punch. Um, you have to try it out, but that's the cool thing. Is that once you have that motor fixed in place, and you want to change the controller, like, you know. So th is this is going to be a kit then, huh? Yeah. Okay. For the Grom. For the you just Grom pull the Grom motor out, sell it, take that money, pop we'll it in the... In. Yeah. Yep. The, the most expensive part is the battery. And then we're going to make this so we can just get like the max range. So we're going to have a battery, a custom battery cage. So it'll form around the tire, come all the way down here. So you'll fill in this whole section of the battery. That oh. battery is probably going to be roughly like 2500 bucks, maybe two, three grand, depending on how many cells we get in there. I'll post a picture of what it looked like when it was not in pieces. In pieces. <laughs> so the, the, the Grom's super freaking cool, but the reason we're here, of course, is for the e -ruck. This is what all the buzz is about, at least on our end, because we're the ruckus guys. So over here you can kind of see first generation, second generation, actually. Oh, these are the swing arms, right? Yeah, so that was like the initial idea of making it full billet. That was that 3D was, printed, was right? 3D printed. With these little neon pieces are 3D printed, proof of concept. Sweet. And that was going to be uber expensive, and it's still expensive. So we went, kind of went with this machined and steel swing arm. And then this was our we got Chapo. second generation. <laughs> This, uh, this one's a second generation? Yeah, so this was a shock that we're going to use as a traditional ruckus shock. And uh, we found that it was way too soft and too springy. A little bouncy. It was very bouncy. That was your update over there, huh? So then we went to this guy. Big, beefy son of a gun. Oh, yeah. So that one does a job, and it looks good. Oh, heck yeah. And then we don't have to make any adapters on the bottom, too, so it's centered. So that's just ready to go. And then... You can see this one's just very, like, very prototype. It's just square cut off. Everything is just kind of hacked together. And then this was our third. Starts looking a little bit prettier. We got the mounts with the new shock. Oh, yeah. And that's where we're at now. So you and then this, is a, this was like when it, you look at it and you're like Bob Ross painting. You're like, what the heck is he doing with this flat, the square steel? And then... As the Bob Ross painting goes along, you're like, oh, I get it, there it is, damn! And then, yeah, you can see the mix of billet with the steel, and then it, it all kind of comes together. And you did the steel to keep the price down. Yeah, definitely. But you are uh, you added some stuff to just, spruce yeah, it up, make it look stuff. nice. Just imagine trying to machine this ginormous piece right here. Yeah. Out of billet, it's just going to be like billions and billions of dollars. And you're, you're thinking about maybe uh, some carbon fiber? Yeah, so someone reached out and they're like, hey, how cool would it be if we had uh, carbon fiber uh, caps that went around that, maybe up to it's here so too. Sweet. So, or like an accessory or something. Mm hmm. So that's up in the air. But. You got to see the seat render that he did of this. Look at this seat. It's got the foam over the top. You haven't seen that done. Super creative. So, yeah, and it has these uh, openings in there, and then the controller sits under the seat. So the air is going to kind of like flow through and warm up the That's booty. That's super you know? sweet. <laughs> no, it's just more of an aesthetic thing. And oh, is that carbon fiber? Yeah, I might... Flip it over again. I might... Um, it's so cool how you can illustrate that on there. Get someone to make that out of carbon fiber as well. I think that'd be pretty neat. So here's the uh, center shock bracket. The one you see on the bike there is like just very prototype out of raw steel. This is a 3D printed version. It's gonna be a billet eventually. So cool, you can just 3D print it and then before you go metal. And then billet. here's the final that we have designed. So we kind of oh, recess cool. those pockets. Nice. Put a little bit of meat in here. But material should be here on Monday for that. I like. And that's like, that's the missing link to take her for at least initial initial test drive. Heck yeah. Look at that, he's rocking the pro builds. Oh yeah. Best of the best. <laughs> The titanium axle too. Oh yeah. Pretty cool little like cover there. That's the uh, Luso, that's right. Luso, and then this thing flips up, right? Yeah. And you can kind of see this is the prototype shock mount bracket versus the... Oh yeah, the one that you just showed us. The one, the billet one. And then your controller is mounted under the seat. Can you see that? The new one's going to be slightly smaller than that. Look at that, look at that hub though. 
big boy. And actually, here's a sprocket that we're using. Carbon fiber? Damn! So that's the sprocket we're using, but now it's just like, it's starting to look kind of cheap compared to everything else on the oh, build. <laughs> so yeah, we might actually just upgrade that to build it um, or make it an option for people. It's just, it just keeps getting more and more expensive, which sucks, but it's the reality of it. Yeah, yeah, it's a hobby. But, but you know, there's options. Like if you just want to get this to get it going and later on you want the billet one. You, you just know, add to you it. Just bolt it on, bolt it off. That's the cool thing is you can always upgrade. Just start with a base, just like a when you're doing a GY6 swap. Yeah. So we're going to be offering this kit at some point when it's, uh, when it's done. So at this point in the design and building, where are we at? Like if somebody wanted one, how, how would, what, so what's, what's the story? We actually had a 10, 10 spot pre-sale and at this moment they're already all filled in. And a uh, big shout out to those guys because they're the ones that keep us moving. And, uh, it gives us that extra pressure to get it done otherwise it would just be sitting on that shelf. So we got all the pre-sales in and you know, we give everybody an update. Everyone gets to see like the inside scoop of the process. So, they're kind of like helping vote yeah, on the design and yeah, stuff, which is cool. See, you're getting to see it firsthand of, uh, you know, that shock mount was initially just a piece of thin scrap. You know, we, we chopped it up, we welded a piece, and we've gone back and forth. Then they get to see the 3D printed version, and then eventually we'll put it in these fancy machines here. Why don't you show us those machines while you're talking? We'll see the, uh, the finished process. So I think that's kind of cool to have them get an inside look and see where the free sale's going. Oh, that's sweet. So on this right here, this is actually going to Japan. This is from much through Makoto. It's in a rough state. But Awesome. Oh yeah, so pre-sales are just kind of the extra push for us to get this process done. You got Eric over there, the other master. This guy, this, that's the guy, that's the real guy behind the magic, you know? Oh yeah. Right here, you can see. Ooh, look at those. There's candy everywhere. We have all the, the main components in here for for the pre-sales. You know, these are the, the tensioners over your sandwich plates. Thicker ones, medium ones. Uh, swing arm. Just for the record, Evan doesn't do wheels, but he these decided guys, to. Uh, these guys waited super patiently. It's funny, I had a lot of people yell at me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but these guys waited patiently for a year for us to just make wheels for them. So. Um, How does it feel to be back in the wheel game for two minutes? Uh, it's, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun. It's a nice change of pace. So uh, if somebody wants to buy one, how, what do we, I, I know that all the spots are full, so like what's the story, or so just got it. after that, after our initial 10 are out, everyone's happy, please, we're gonna do another run of 10. And um, you have our Instagram, FLP Parts. If you wanna see the process, uh, YouTube, FLP Parts. Yeah, they got a bunch of videos up there. And then again, FLPparts.com, we have a whole rug section. Uh, we're actually working on getting that updated so it has all the specs and info and all the common questions that we can ask. And the cool thing is FLP, if you don't know him already, he's not new to the game. We have tons of the parts on the, on the website. He's been in the game longer than I have. But uh, he's like a bunch, uh, bunch of his other parts. We, we have the full FLP line on our website as well, but FLPparts.com for all that stuff.